On the way to Ford Takeover and actually on the way back from Ford Takeover, I was a little nervous towing the car that far. I didn't like the way that I had to tie the car down to the trailer. What's going on and welcome back. So I'm out in the shop today. Want to kind of give a little update on Project Stepchild. We've got some parts coming in. Some parts to help us run better at the drag strip. Some parts to lighten up the car a little bit. And the part I want to discuss and hopefully install today will help us get the car to the drag strip. Now let me explain. On the way to Ford Takeover, and actually on the way back from Ford Takeover, I was a little nervous towing the car that far because of one particular reason, and that reason is I didn't like the way that I had to tie the car down to the trailer. Now, I was able to tie it down and the car was secure, but I didn't like the way I had to do it. The way I had to do it was the hooks, so to speak, whatever you want to call them, on the end of the strap that would actually hook to the car. I had to have the hook upside down. Normally I like to have the hook this way so that if the strap loosened up, it's still hooked on. I used four different holes, obviously, in the chassis um, that was in some pretty good spots and reinforced. But like I said, the hooks were upside down and I just didn't really like that didn't care for for how I had to do that um, the car was secure but I always had in the back of my mind that you know at any point if one of the straps came loose the hook could fall out and that could cause some major issues when towing a car so hopefully we're gonna eliminate that with this kit and let me show you what I've got to do that. So I went ahead and bought the Ford Performance S550 Mustang tie-down kit, which you can see right there. I went ahead and bought this from LMR. They actually had it on sale. Um, not like a huge sale, but enough off of it to where I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and get it and see if I can get it to fit. Now, I say see if I can get it to fit because there's one thing that I need to show you that may get in the way. I'm gonna see if I can get you down here without having to turn you sideways. Hopefully I won't have to, but I'm gonna shine a light here. Maybe you can see, uh, let me turn you sideways. If you can see that right there. On this car, I have jacking rails. So the problem with that is a lot of these tie down kits don't fit with jacking rails. But I decided to buy the kit anyway. I think the rear ones will bolt on no problem. It uses existing holes in the chassis, so that's not a big deal. It's, you don't have to drill anything or do anything like that. The problem is though, that the front holes that the front tie down brackets use is used by the jacking rails. I think the rear is fine, but I need to take a look at it and find out for sure. So let's do that. Let me get the car jacked up with the jacking rail and we'll take a look and see what we've got. Now this is what's cool about these jacking rails is you can jack up the entire side of the car from one spot anywhere on the rail. The whole side of the car can come up so it makes tire changing easy. If you're running a square setup, all you have to do is unbolt them, swap them front to back, do the other side and done. I do like the jacking rails and I use them a lot. So I want to keep them on the car. I don't want to get rid of them just to put these tie down brackets on there, but we'll see what we've got to do. Let's check out the rear first. I want to take a look at that and um, see if it'll go on with no problem. All right, so here we are. This is the back of the car. As you can see the tire here, we're on the passenger side and I wanted to show you where this goes. This is the rear one and we're good to go in the rear. So that's good news. And it is going to go as soon as I can get under here. 
it's gonna go right here and my hands kind of in the way but this is where it's gonna sit it'll bolt up to these holes as you can see those holes there's one here and one here so let's get the bolts and uh, let's actually get this one up there uh, it won't take but a second all right so we're gonna get this one up there um, the instructions do call for a little bit of blue Loctite now don't go crazy on your Loctite uh, a little bit goes a long way you can see this I'm not putting a lot on there but enough to where it's gonna hold that bolt in there and hopefully not let it go so you see if I can fit my fat head in here and let's get this one bolted up And these are slotted, the brackets themselves. Um, not exactly sure why, but because it doesn't seem like there's a lot of adjustment in these. Because this one's all the way against the hole. I can't really move the bracket back and forth. So why they're slotted, I have no idea, honestly. But the holes in the chassis, they are already threaded. So all you need to do is put some Loctite on, run these up, and you're good to go. And we're gonna run them up pretty even there. Kinda go back and forth. Now it says to tighten these to 55 foot pounds. Um, I'm not going to use a torque wrench. I'm just going to put a what I feel would, will be enough. I'm using a half inch ratchet so I can get some decent force on it. You don't want to put so much that you strip them out. But we're going to make sure they're good and tight on there. And that's the passenger rear she's on there all right so moving on to the front here is the issue that I was talking about with the jack and rails now I took the jack out from under the jack and rails I've got the car on the jack stand underneath the cane member and went ahead and put one of these stock bolts in to show you what's going on basically what's happening here is this part of the jack and rail is interfering with the tie down bracket so that's what they're talking about that's why they say it might not fit with jack and rails so i believe these are the steeda jack and rails the original ones that came out i've had them on here for years and they've taken quite the abuse i must say but they work great and i love them so i want to keep them so i think what i'm going to do to remedy this is i'm going to grind off right here where this is coming in contact make it flush so that that can sit flat against the jack and rail and then bolt it up and I think it'll work. So let's see what we can do. All right, so I wanna show you guys what I did with the jack and rail. As you can see in the spot right here, I just ground that away, used the old trusty side grinder and uh, took some metal out there. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Once these jack and rails are bolted up, you know, it just brings the jack and rail flush against the underside of the car you can still use it it's not like it's under major stress or fatigue you know with these bolts so cutting that away I don't think it's going to affect it now I didn't want to cut the tie down bracket because that is something that needs to stay like it is in the shape that it is and as much materials on there so 
I didn't want to sacrifice that part, but we can sacrifice this because it's not under a lot of tension. And once you jack up on any part of this rail, it's forcing against the entire length of that against the bottom of the car. So not a big deal. So let me shoot a little bit of paint on there. As you can see, they're kind of rusting up anyway, but let me shoot a little bit of paint in that area just to kind of uh, keep it from rusting any further. So I'm just going to shoot a little bit of black paint on it. No big deal just to cover the spot that I grind it off so oh, that's a pretty thick coat huh <laughs> anyway good grief I think that'll do it so this stuff is really cool it dries pretty quick so we'll give that just a second while we put some Loctite on these bolts and get them ready to go in now the bolts I do want to talk about they are long enough um, they will go up through the bracket and the jack and rail, no problem. They are plenty long enough, so not too worried about that. All right, so I think that is long enough time to dry. Like I said, it dries really quick. And let's get these up here. Now these are also existing holes already in the chassis. Um, the bolts that I took out, those are actually factory bolts. Now why they're in these holes, I don't know exactly. But they are in there. So to install jack and rails, you just take them out, put the jack and rail up, put them back in. <clears throat> And with these, we're going to run it up. Try to run it up equally. And you got a little bit of play back and forth on this one. Um, not quite sure why. I'm just going to kind of use that to uh, maintain my clearance from where I notched out the jack and rail. And we should bolt up no problem. As you can probably see, it is pulling up the jack and rail along with, along with it. So the jack and rail sit nice and flush against the bottom of the car, like I said. So they will go back into the position they were in originally. And okay, we're not hitting there. So we got them nice and tight and there you go front one is on not too much of a modification that i had to do so that's awesome all right so i want to get you guys a look from the side these do hang down a little bit but i want to get you a look like kind of straight from the side so you can see about how it hangs down now i might have to use my flashlight here because you can hardly see it now you see it there so now you can see it it's right there if I bring you straight looking on from the side there, I mean, you can barely see it. It barely hangs down from there. So as far as ground clearance goes, I don't think that's going to be an issue. And from what I'm seeing, what I'm looking at, not going to be a problem. That's awesome. All right, so on the front here, I want to show you the side view. And you can see the tie down right there, right here, hanging just a little bit. Hopefully I won't run into any issues with that, uh, speed bumps or whatnot, I really hope not. That would suck, but hopefully, hopefully they won't. I don't think they will, I don't think it'll give us too much problem. But there you go, they don't hang down too bad. But that will allow me to get that hook on top of it rather than underneath. 
All right, so there you go, a simple little modification. Um, something that's gonna be very useful for me in traveling to the track, whether it be local or out of state or whatnot. Um, it's really gonna give me a better feeling um, of security with the car on the trailer because I was pretty worried about it, um, you know, driving to Tennessee and back for Ford Takeover. But I think we've got that issue resolved. Um, I think this is gonna work out awesome, actually. And like I said, that'll make me feel better knowing that the car is more secure with these tie downs. These are made by Ford Performance, so I think they should know the best way to tie down an S550 and they came up with that solution so anyway that's going to do it for this video just wanted to put it out there because it's what i'm doing with the car you know it's what i've got going on so i figured i would just share it with you guys and uh let you see what's going on so anyway stay tuned we got a lot more coming not only do we have the whipple install coming but we've got some other parts that we're going to put on as well so like i said one of them is really going to help me at the drag strip to hopefully be more consistent with the car and racing it all together. But stay tuned and we'll cover that very soon. But anyway, hope you liked this video. If you did hit the like button, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we'll see you on the next one.